Welcome to the Mask Media webinar second half. This morning we had three very excellent speeches and elected to continue the discussions with the three presenters plus Fibertex, uh, who was also uh, involved, you know, is also involved with uh, media. And so we had a very good uh, hour and a half webinar, and it has been recorded. I elected to give my presentation separately. And so this recording is part of the whole uh, webinar, but uh, just really the overview and wrap up of the uh, presentations this morning. And again, this morning we had uh, good con good contributions from our consultants, uh, as as well as from the uh, participants of the in the three speeches. And in fact, uh, some of them, uh, for instance, uh, Barry Garfinkel uh, uh, had some very good uh, information on uh, viruses. And so, in my speech, I'm going to be reviewing things like mask media consideration, and one is the virus factors. And I thought it was interesting this morning that Barry pointed out that the COVID virus is much more vulnerable to a temperature than, say, the polio virus. And so uh, washing uh, a mask in, uh, in hot water, even uh, at 90 degrees centigrade, is more than enough uh, uh, to inactivate the virus. So we're looking, I think, at a huge market. The, the question would be, number one, in, uh, in, in January, the question was whether anybody other than healthcare workers needed to wear masks. And essentially, uh, most agencies, and in, in, including the WHO, and CDC were saying only healthcare workers need to wear masks. And then things quickly changed. Now we're at the point that uh, pretty much universal requirement around the world to wear masks. And now we're starting to see even further that wearing a mask with three layers of media has been specified by WHO as in their guidelines. So that is taking a step source towards saying, you know, it's these viruses are very small in many cases. Are they the viruses are small, but they're in small droplets in many cases, and therefore you need a mask to protect yourself. And so I think we've come a long way in just a few months, but the result is going to be a huge market for for masks, and certainly they're already. Uh, selling lots and lots of cloth masks, but I think the long term is going to be much more efficient masks for the average individual and customized so that uh, if you're involved in certain situations, you're gonna to wanna to wear a higher efficiency mask than you are in other situations, or you're gonna to want to wear a mask with valves, uh, with a valve under certain situations where you uh, can, uh, can tape the valve over under other situations or uh, wear, uh, wear uh, a mask with a valve uh, in, in sports and other activities. So it's going to be a much more complex but very huge uh, opportunity for the mask suppliers and then, and then for the populations of, of the world, it's a way to get back to work and to do so safely, uh, I think it will be successfully argued in the future that a highly efficient mask is the number one protection that you need to have. And the the question really is the cost, not and and the and the uh, whether or not you need it, rather than whether it's effective or not. I mean, we put a man on the moon wearing. Uh, 
face protection that uh, and and a suit that protects them from a lot more difficult challenges than a virus and people working in clean rooms and then healthcare uh, surgeons and so forth all are wearing very efficient masks and so there's no question about the uh, a mask and and the protection if it's the right mask and the right fit but anyway, uh, relative to the mass media considerations, you do have the virus factors, and then you have uh, mass factors that we'll get into here. And so let's start with the size and proliferation of aerosols. <clears throat> we breathe in millions of particles per minute. It's, it's incredible. But if you, if you look at uh, a beam of uh, sunlight coming in your window, you see that the air is fill, filled with small little particles. So it doesn't. It defies common sense, but basically we're breathing in millions of particles uh, each minute and discharging those particles. The, the the what also happens is that there uh, what they call splashes in the lungs, and some of the uh, viruses actually uh, are entrained in these viral splashes and discharged as droplets. Some of the virus probably adhere to some of the particles that are going in and out of the lungs we're, we're getting information for instance that in the lombardi region air pollution particles uh, are found to have virus on them so whether these particles were inhaled and then exhaled or just how they got there but in any case there is a relationship the Minimum infectious dose is critical, and it can be as low as 10 viral particles. So a super spreader could be generating thousands and thousands of particles, viral particles per minute. So the, the question is whether, how likely if you inhale just 10 of those you are to be uh, infected uh, is a question that really hasn't been quantified, but theoretically, uh, you can be infected with that with that few number of particles. So a mass that gets you 30 or 40 percent uh, capture is not going to be necessarily very effective if, in fact, you're uh, uh, subject to uh, conditions where there are lots and lots of viral particles. So many of the particles that we we handle are are uh, long what we call long distance travelers. Uh, the uh, for for those involved in air pollution, uh, it turned out to be a surprise, but mercury em, em, emitted from gold mines in Brazil ended up uh, in the Arctic. So these particles can travel, and the the overwhelming information is that these small viral particles uh, and droplets, uh, even as they start to evaporate, may down, be down to smaller uh, particle sizes and can travel certainly hundreds of feet and maybe much more. And in a wind, uh, they can travel even farther than that. So uh, whether it's miles or whether it's hundreds of feet, it's not just six feet. So the percentage of the air virus that's in aerosols versus larger droplets is something that still hasn't been quantified. But again, if you're th emitting thousands of droplets, if only hundreds of uh, thousands of viral particles, if only hundreds of them are in uh, the small uh, droplets that from speaking or from breathing, uh, that's all that is needed to infect somebody and those are the ones that are going to travel some distance so this is you know how, how big is a viral load and it could be uh, thousands and thousands of particles uh, uh, as the lusty singer in Washington State that was able to uh, infect 45 people in just a couple of hours and there's many many such uh, instances recently the a whole bar full of people uh, uh, just this last weekend, all picked up the uh, the virus. Um, so the, those this doesn't happen by just touching or being within six feet. 
So the minimum effectual infectious dose, we've talked about the life of the virus. Uh, it's, it's known to remain viable uh, in the hour, for hours in the air and for days on surfaces. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. The virus rejuvenation from dormancy, it has been documented that viruses are not necessarily dead, but just dormant as they travel through the air. They then can penetrate the lungs where the moisture revives them. So there's also creation of aerosols from viruses leaving the surfaces. There are numerous cases tracking aerosols which were originally on surfaces such as floors or clothing. Some studies in Wuhan hospitals show that the clothes, the changing room uh, from surgical garments to clothes, uh, to outdoor clothes or uh, clothes, to, uh, the normal clothes is an area where there's a lot of aerosol generation. So the efficiency of various masks in removing the viruses, there's a lot of this being reported, but it's heavily uh, in, in weighted as to whether there's a gap or not, not a gap. And with the normal uh, surgical mask with, with a gap, you have a relatively low percentage of efficiency on particles smaller than than 300 nanometers or 0.3 microns, and and even and uh, with with a with a gap, not very high efficiency on ones larger. So people are walking around with cloth masks that have nowhere near even the surgical mask efficiency, and with large gaps and so forth, the amount of viruses that they're actually capturing is highly highly questionable. And so I think we've got some serious uh, research and communication that needs to be done uh, if people are falsely thinking they're protected by wearing uh, an inefficient cloth mask with a big gap. So there are various mask media options, which we delved into uh, to some extent in the first part of the webinar. But until recently, melt blowns uh, as sandwiched between two layers of spun bonded media were pretty much the norm. And this causes an electrostatic effect, which improves the efficiency of the medium. Although <clears throat> the limitation would be that it uh, is difficult to clean this media without reducing the efficiency. But now we've got. Uh, uh, nanofibers uh, that can be part of a, a of a matrix. We've got membranes that can be uh, a layer on a support uh, non-woven. So there's all sorts of new uh, media that's available. And in fact, not even new media, there's media that's being applied in the case of, of Cummins and Alstrom and so forth to other applications which now can be used for a mass. So some of the newly available uh, media has efficiencies rated at the N99 or better. And again, everything else being equal, if you can get an N99 efficiency, you're gonna be better off than with a less efficient mask. And then the washability, the, the melt blown can be, can, decontaminated with UV light, H2O2, and other means. Uh, our daily alerts are showing lots and lots of uh, ways that that the melt blown mass can be uh, cleaned and reused. So they, and many, many hospitals now are, are doing that. Uh, they're, they have the means within the hospital to do it with the UV light or the hydrogen peroxide. But Patel has been um, providing centralized uh, decontamination with hydrogen peroxide systems at a number of locations uh, around the country. So you ship the contaminated mass to them, they ship the clean mass back to you. And of course, the membrane uh, materials can be washed by various means and, and washed up to 50 times. And this being the case, you can actually reuse a 
tight fitting mask that's got uh, a lot of expensive uh, aspects to it that you couldn't provide in a disposable mask. But the mask uh, certainly uh, has to uh, cons be considered in terms of efficiency reduction over time with washing, mask fit. The comfort is another big feature in why masks with valves are being uh, used uh, throughout Asia. And this really has to be rethought too. Under many circumstances, it may be better to protect the wearer rather than uh, worry about uh, pr protecting others. And in fact, uh, uh, if you're wearing a cloth mask, you're probably not protecting others anyway. Uh, if you're in some sort of a setting where you're more than six feet away, the um, the if you're more than six feet away, so say you're 100 yards away from somebody and there's a light breeze and you're wearing a cloth mask uh, and you're breathing small aerosols, they're going to probably reach the uh, individual who or could reach that individual who's 100 feet away. Uh, and uh, so whether you're wearing a, a efficient mask with a valve or a uh, inefficient mask without a valve, you're not really probably protecting that person who's more than six feet uh, away. And of course, breathability, oxygen uh, deprivation, some of these other other things. So we can't really just uh, say we're not going to use uh, masks with valves, when, particularly when it comes to elderly people and those that uh, have uh, respiratory problems. So that again, this is the uh, valve options that we we need to to worry about as well. And then you've got conditions, uh, which would be, or you could call them the uh, environment. But you've got the virus load. If you're on a subway, <clears throat> if you're in tight quarters, if you're certainly in a football game, <clears throat> you know the virus load potentially uh, could be huge, and so that's got to be taken into consideration. Uh, the percentage of, of aerosols, the humidity, the um, and then you've got the, the higher the humidity, the better. Then you've got airflow patterns, which are is critical. And the EPA filtered air that that uh, with laminar flow that uh, causes clean air to pass downward over the body and 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 to the ground level is actually, of course, ideal. But if you've got wind and uh, outside conditions, you have to be aware of the potential that viruses are going to be carried by the wind. And in fact, in the <clears throat> election line, say in Milwaukee, where a number of people were infected, they were lined up. So you could have, a, in theory, there was probably a linear cloud of virus that people just kept by staying in line, kept walking through the same virus cloud, and they would have probably better off zig being zigzagging or doing anything other than what they did. So you have to be con uh, uh, think about the, the conditions. And then, of course, the benefits of capturing other contaminants. And for much of the world, the Uh, other contaminants other than COVID-19 uh, are just as important. If you're in India, where there, you know, we're already talking about millions of small particles in the atmosphere. When you're talking about uh, many times that number, and you're talking about uh, heavy metals and VOCs and some of these other contaminants, so the uh, you you're ha you you have um, a definite problem that uh, it, it makes those masks very desirable, and in fact that's why throughout Asia the mask wearing has been typical in um, in the, over the last uh, ten or twenty years. 
So the wear factors, obviously, uh, age and immune, immune response. So you've got uh, other medical conditions as well, uh, lung function, and then you've got the activity, somebody who's involved in sports. And uh, so they, these are some of the things that we, we looked at here, the virus load, and then percentage of aer aerosols, again, humidity, we just talked about airflow patterns and the benefits of the uh, con contaminant uh, removal. And we think in terms of only the um, Asian countries and others and African countries where you've got these high air pollution loads, <clears throat> but we're finding some other uh, things out even in the United States, in St. Louis where they control the fine, fine particulate in the air to pretty low levels they also installed some moldy metal analyzers and EPA has been controlling metals by as a as a surrogate for uh, a particulate being a surrogate for the moldy metals so with low particulate you can assume low uh, moldy metals but that's only if the metal content stays constant what they found was that these moldy metal detectors found huge spikes of lead on days when the wind blew from a lead refinery. So even here in uh, the United States, the use of the mass can be very beneficial. And of course, hospital acquired infections is another aspect uh, where masks for visitors to to hospitals uh, will keep them from causing infection and, and certainly everybody within the hospital from from getting it and for patients as well of course to, to be to be wearing those so you got the, the wear factors that we just talked about here age and re immune response and certainly for those that uh, are compromised uh, they they should seriously consider using uh, or being allowed to use masks with valves. And again, back on the activities, we just went went over that. And so, whether it's something like a meat processing job or whatever, there needs to be uh, consideration of the amount of physical activity that is involved here. So we. Uh, I went through some of the products that are available this morning, but I'm, what I'm just going to do is kind of just quickly touch on them. Uh, you've got new media being designed uh, around the world. And here, for instance, uh, in Saudi Arabia is a membrane that can be attached to a regular N95 mask and replaced when, when needed. So fiber extrusions technology, um, is is got a, uh, a sustainable poly polyamide and polyester uh, uh, ma material and is looking at using some of these materials other um, than and then just the polypropylene and believes that there is a benefit in some of these other non other other non wovens so NXT Nano uh, is providing um, nanofiber material coated, uh, nanofiber coated PET uh, material. And um, so then, uh, and uh, Tustar is uh, teaming with Nutrition uh, on high efficiency masks uh, that are already being used in uh, China, China and using uh, nanotechnology. Uh, so, so this is an easy to clean uh, mask and all, already being widely used in China. So uh, Nexera is using the uh, Agion antimicrobials uh, treated polyester. Uh, and this uh, is uh, provided by their partner, Sissient. And uh, this is a whole another area is, is the antimicrobial uh, coatings that can be uh, supplied or media that's where it's permanently a part of the media. So Alstrom is uh, 
moving into an area that we've been talking about here where it's efficiency slightly less than the N90 uh, and the 88% uh, efficient uh, uh, medium, but uh, much, much higher than the 20 to 40% efficiency of masks made from cloth. And it's a mechanical filter media, so it, it can be washed. So O2 nano mask is a relatively expensive mask with multiple uh, layers, uh, including nano fibers, but again, it can be uh, washed. So Cambridge has an N99 efficient uh, mask that uh, has been widely used uh, in for air pollution protection and uh, it is available from England. Drager says that its N95 mask offers uh, superior comfort and, and breathability. A CDC has approved air purifying respirators and Drager uh, is, is involved in those respirators, so is MSA. <clears throat> and what happened uh, was that MSA uh, supplied respirators to the Allegheny healthcare system uh, because there weren't enough N95 masks available. And what uh, the Allegheny the hospital uh, in, in that hospitals in that Allegheny system found out was that they like the uh, respirator the, with a replaceable cartridge better than they do their N95 masks. And now there's all sorts of research and papers on why hospitals should use the respirators, uh, such as made by MSA and Drager and so forth, uh, and with the replaceable mem uh, uh, filters uh, and where you can uh, decontaminate and uh, reuse the, the respirator itself. So this is a whole new area of investigation. So IQ Air has a multi-layer uh, HEPA uh, filter uh, with um, microglass fiber and it's uh, fairly widely used uh, around the world. Back in the United States, Armbrust uh, American is dedicated to, to US supply of uh, masks and is scheduled to produce 1.2 million masks per day and can produce billions of uh, masks annually if needed. WL Gore has always been an innovative uh, company and they have uh, some proprietary high flow laminates that they're using for mask covers and we are going to learn more uh, about their offerings, uh, hopefully in the near future. Motex out of Asia offers N80 masks, and uh, they're being pretty widely distributed throughout Asia. And so I think that um, more attention should be provided to what they're doing as well, and we will try to do so. Uh, Hollingsworth and Bose is teamed with Midwest Textiles uh, on a um, uh, using their nano web uh, media for uh, homemade masks, but obviously uh, it is involved in a much larger uh, way with mask uh, media. Uh, Bondex is <clears throat> using a uh, hydro entangled polyester construction that has advantages. Asiatic Fiber Corporation has a mask filter with three three layers and a, a filter pad, again, to re give, give high efficiency at the PM 2.5 range. And Stardex Med has uh, got a small personal air purifier, claimed to be the smallest uh, N90 filter that can be combined with a surgical or cloth mask. And then we have uh, in the, the webinar this, this morning, a VOG, VOG mask, uh, made a very impressive um, presentation on their high, uh, high quality mask with all the uh, efficiency requirements. But there are whole, all sorts of, um, of fashion masks out there now, which have various features, which may or may not include high efficiency. And here's the Lumen 
uh, mask that uh, probably doesn't have the efficiency, but does have all sorts of wearable uh, text uh, text display. So Alpha Protec uh, uh, has a, a face mask um, design that is N95 uh, and uh, has features things like a, a magic arch for higher breathability and comfort. So 22 mask has a uh, $5 mask with 95% or more efficiency and five layers of protection. So Exxon Mobil uh, was really a pioneer in melt blown filtration uh, decades and decades ago and then sold some of that business. But um, they believe that they have uh, a replaceable cartridge system that is going to be uh, very well received. And so the filters are disposable while the main components of the mask withstand repeated sterilization. So we'll be looking to learn more about that. Uh, SWM is a uh, major supplier of the media and films, and their film is uh, used as a flexible surface layer for medical mask. Uh, face masks. So Barry uh, has a uh, range of products, including the melt blowns, but Synerg Synergix One is a new media for face masks that is aimed uh, at the slightly less than the N95 with a multi-layer non-woven composite uh, in a single sheet as an alternate to the traditional face mask. So SpectraShield has antimicrobial respirator uh, mass with high efficiency. So N NC State has a new uh, spun bond capability that they believe uh, is uh, provides considerable advantages over the traditional uh, melt blowns, and they're actually using some of their prototype. Uh, university machinery there to make make the masks, and I, we're going to hear, I'm sure, more from them. So MSA, as I as I was talking about before, has uh, these respirators, but they're with the two removable cartridges. But hospitals are finding that this may be a better uh, choice for them. A Syndat is a uh, European company with a uh, replaceable membrane. Uh, in a mask that's washable. Uh, Cummins is using the DuPont uh, uh, media, the hybrid membrane technology in in masks that where the media design was originally for air fuel and loop filtration. Fibertex non-wovens, uh, uh, we will get into separately, but they have a synthetic and non-charged uh, EPA 13 filter media and they did talk in the uh, webinar portion this morning. Uh, Superior Felt is uh, providing, uh, they're, they're not the manufacturer, but they provide the Technostat Plus with the tribal electric media of needle punched felt that offers a at least a 20% filtration, fil filtration improvement. So these are some of the um, products that are out there we're going to be pursuing all of this on a continuing daily basis. We have a 10 page daily alert, sometimes even more following all this. And we will have uh, continuing webinars and we're also doing the uh, analysis of the uh, markets. So I would like to thank you for spending the time for this portion of the webinar. And this is Bob McElvain. I'm glad to answer any questions. 847-226-2391. And this is Bob McElvain signing off.